Well, good afternoon. It is Mother's Day, and this is the debut. Well, I guess you can't see the debut edition. This is sort of the episode zero edition of the John Thomas Hill podcast. And what we intend to do with this is to build up over the course of the next few weeks, months, and years a podcast that's going to combine news, uh, what's going on in the world, basically, sports, pop culture, geek culture, whatever else I can find fascinating. And <clears throat> the way I'm going to do it is basically I'm going to come here when on a re somewhat regular basis. It may be weekly, it may be twice weekly, it may be whatever the heck I decide that something has come up that has garnered my attention to where I need to do a podcast about it. So this is the reason why I'm on here right now is to um, basically make official what I'm going to be doing on this podcast, and that is talking about the stuff that I'm interested in, not necessarily the stuff I like, the stuff I'm interested in, whether it be politics, whether it be um, a rant about Trump, a rant about Congress, or a rant about anything else. Um, it may be about the world in general, which is, you know, North Korea's tested another missile, and <clears throat> why that may be a very dumb idea, because it could very well lead to World War III potentially. Uh, and this time we're not joking about that. Um, we'll also talk sports here. Uh, we'll talk about the fact that the NBA, <clears throat> as predicted, it's Golden State and San Francisco, excuse me, uh, Golden State and San Antonio in the Western Conference Finals, yawn, and uh, Cleveland versus potentially Boston or Washington in the Eastern Conference Finals, again, yawn. And when I say that, it's because, frankly, the NBA has kind of gotten boring. A lot of it's just the fact that, hang on, excuse me for just a second, the cat decided it wanted to jump on the counter there for just a second, I had to... Uh, <clears throat> get rid of uh, get that situation. So he's now off the counter, thank goodness. But anyhow, the NBA has kind of gotten boring. Uh, it's just, in my honest opinion, I think a lot of it is just the fact that it's just pre too predictable. We all knew Golden State and San Antonio were going to be in the, final, in the Western Conference Finals. We knew Cleveland would be in there. We just didn't know who among the rest of the East would be there, and we probably figure that Cleveland will be in the finals anyway. Who they'll play will be up for debate. I'm guessing it'll probably be Golden State again for the third year in a row. And that's not necessarily a good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing when you have um, consistently good teams. It's just that <clears throat> when it's the same ones over and over again in the finals and the, the playoffs don't really look like it's that competitive, that's a problem. When you contrast it with the NHL, it's almost too competitive. You've got Pittsburgh, a perennially a good team, facing off against Ottawa in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, Ottawa is the lone remaining Canadian team in the, in the um, Stanley Cup playoffs. There are going to be a lot of people rooting for Ottawa just to end that nearly quarter century long streak of Canada, Canadian teams not winning the Stanley Cup, which is unheard of. It's never come close to happening before. And I think it'll be uh, this year where Ottawa will surprise the Penguins and beat Pittsburgh and go to the Stanley Cup Finals and finally end the streak. Because in the other conference, the Western Conference, you have Ash not Asheville, I'm sorry, Anaheim <clears throat> against Nashville. Which, um, considering that Nashville is the home of country music, the fact that they are eight wins away from, now actually seven wins away, as they won on uh, Friday night, they're seven wins away from the Stanley Cup. Seven wins away from where Dolly Parton and Minnie Pearl and a bunch of others have um, <coughs> done their thing. Um, it's kind of frightening. <laughs> it's like almost a, a sign of the apocalypse, perhaps, that, that uh, the Stanley Cup will be residing in the home of country music. Yeah, that's, 
That's definitely scary. Um, Anaheim has been there before. Whether or not they make it this time is anybody's guess. My guess is Nashville's going to be the the team to try and bring it home to the heartland. Uh, and that means Ottawa versus Nashville in the Stanley Cup Finals, which, um, yeah, that's not exactly appealing. <laughs> you know that the NHL offices are hoping for Pittsburgh versus Anaheim because Anaheim's in the L.A. region. Pittsburgh is in the East Coast, in the industrial East Coast region, and that would be more of a ratings getter than Nashville versus Ottawa. So, yeah, you know, um, they're hoping for Anaheim at least, I'm sure, to get in the Stanley Cup Finals and Pittsburgh because you have Sydney, Sydney Crosby there. So, yeah, but I'm thinking it's Nashville and Ottawa just because the NHL has a habit of uh, shooting itself in the foot. So, anyhow, um, it is Mother's Day. I want to say a shout-out to uh, all the mamas out there. I hope you're having a great day. Um, let's talk about this situation right now with North Korea. Um, we all know that China is pretty much the only buddy that North Korea has that can actually do anything to the United States. Iran likes to play around with, oh, they're, our buddy. they're not really their friends. Um, they're basically, a hey, the United States hates their guts. So apparently we're a, an enemy of an enemy is our friend. China, <clears throat> this is China's little brother, basically. China's mouthy little brother. Uh, the one that's constantly having the big brother roll its eyes and go, what did we get ourselves into? But this is a very difficult situation because there are nuclear weapons involved. There's militaries involved. There's the potential of millions, perhaps even billions of people dying. And North Korea fired a missile today, and it went a lot closer to Russia than it did Japan. So is North Korea trying to get Russia involved? Um, that is a very, very dangerous thing because, A, what if Russia decides it doesn't like having missiles fired at it from North Korea and decides to do something about it? That's a scary proposition, and it should be to anybody with any sense. Um... As of right now, as far as I can tell, our president is not really making any bold moves at the moment, which is smart on his part. Um, I think that right now you've got to be very cautious because the wrong move could trigger World War III. And now that Russia could very well be involved, that makes it even more so. So... Why is this duck on the bottom of the spe speaker? Let me do something right fast. Oh. <clears throat> Auto, it's, I don't know what that is. Auto ducking. <clears throat> mm. uh, I don't know what that is, but it's, there's a little duck at the end of this. It's auto ducking. I guess it has something to do with the volume and such, whatever it is. But anyhow, let me tell you what's going to be coming up in the near future. Um... We're do a we're gonna try to do a podcast from um, uh, Panthers Media Day, and my buddies Todd Kaiser, Cliff Palmieri, and a few others, Anthony Hudson, will be down there hopefully, and we will be riding the way down there. We'll be doing a podcast on the way down there, and maybe even on the way back. So we will see how that goes, and I'm not exactly sure what the date is. It's late July. It'll be hot as all get out, so uh, we will be there, and we'll be telling you what we think about the Panthers' fortunes for this year, which I think are going to be much better than last year, which they were, bit, to say the least, a bit disappointing after the great year they had before. So they are going to be much better this year, in my opinion. Whether they make it to the Super Bowl or not, that's a little bit much right now. I don't really want to go on that limb. But 
I think they will be much better this year than they were last year. Um, <clears throat> what about uh, baseball? I am hoping sometime this year to go down to Atlanta's new ballpark, SunTrust Field. I don't know if I will or not, but I'm trying to get some people together to go down there to check it out and to see if it really is better than Turner Field was. Now I hear people go, well, Turner Field was in a very bad part of Atlanta. The traffic situation was too bad. The parking was bad. There are these things called parking decks, people. They can be built. You can put businesses at the, on the front, first floor of them. So, yeah, you know, I've heard the, the excuses as to why to build a brand new stadium. And I don't think they hold much weight. Because to me, it seems like that you build a stadium out in the middle of nowhere. Well, not right quite out in the middle of nowhere. It is Cobb County, and there are quite a lot of people there. <clears throat> but for all intents and purposes, you're building it away from Atlanta's downtown. And I think that takes a lot of the... I mean, to me, it just seems rather stupid. You have a stadium that's less than 20 years old, and you're moving away from it. And this was a stadium that was perfectly fine for the Olympics and perfectly fine for 20 years, and now all of a sudden it's no longer fine. You didn't even try to fix the problem to begin with. You just wanted to build a new stadium. What's going to happen to that stadium? Um, I think George, Georgia State's going to use it as, as their new home football field. And they'll have to invest money to build in that. They may even move Atlanta United in there, the new MLS club, who are playing at Bobby Dodd Stadium. And, of course, um, they just are going to open this year the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium at, um, in Atlanta to replace the Georgia Dome. And um, I remember when they were building the Georgia Dome. Hmm. You know, to replace Atlanta Fulton County Stadium for the Falcons? Yeah. I remember that. What are they going to do with the Georgia Dome? They're going to implode that? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> you know, and, and to me, it's like you build these stadiums that should last at least several decades, not just um, old enough to legally drink. You know, and Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium didn't even get that far. So yeah, I'm 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 of the opinion that you know if you're going to build a baseball stadium, you better build it for something that's going to last at least fifty years, if not longer. But that's just me. I mean, yeah, you can uh, renovate it, you can um, you know expand it, what have you. You can make adjustments, all all the like. You can even. Go, go real crazy and turn it into a retractable roof stadium, like I think they'll eventually do to Bank of America Stadium if they don't decide to build a brand new stadium in Charlotte within the next 10 years or so. I think that would be the better option. Hang on a second. Call from oh, that's my sister's phone. So we'll ignore that. Um... Let me take a moment to uh, <clears throat> put this on. Do you want to take a message? Okay. All right, sorry about that, folks. Um, yeah, that happens sometimes. Um, well, I'm just going to end this in a little bit because I just wanted to give you a brief idea of what we're going to do. But what I like to do <clears throat> sometime this summer is to do a episode-by-episode episode rundown of Babylon 5, my favorite TV sci-fi series of all time. I think it's better than 
um, uh, Star Wars and Star Trek. But that's just my personal opinion. I'm sure some of you will disagree with that. You're entitled to your own opinion. That's perfectly fine. Um, where was I at? Let me go back to... Uh, <clears throat> oh, I was doing a little bit of a baseball deal. I'm not going to worry about that anymore. Um, let's talk for a moment about what's going on in television these days. And that's the fact that most of the really good TV series aren't on any cable or satellite. At least uh, for the most part. I mean, you've got a revolution going on before our eyes. And that is streaming media. Um, and the, one, the ones that are on cable are on premium cable. Broadcast television, broadcast television networks are, by and large, becoming a, in my opinion, a dinosaur. They're, they're starting to fade away to a certain extent. I mean, yeah, they still get a good audience from time to time. But the quality of shows, for the most part, isn't really that great. I mean, a lot of the stuff they've done is not really groundbreaking. And when a groundbreaking show comes along... The networks tend to not want to stick around for it. And that's a big problem because if you don't have the kind of um, kind of commitment to at least try something different, then you don't really grow as a network. Uh, in my opinion, I think that within the next 10 to 20 years, I think one of the big... Three networks could very well uh, be in very serious trouble. Not necessarily folding away and going away or not, but ABC is owned by Disney. They're not going to let ABC go away. Uh, NBC is owned by NBC Universal Comcast. That's not going to go away anytime soon. And CBS is owned by Viacom. Uh, and that's not going to go away anytime soon. So there's a huge lot of money in these networks. They're not going to go anywhere t anywhere time soon. If, if anything else... What they may very well become is start the slow move over to streaming media. CBS All Access has already started it with the off-delayed Star Trek Discovery TV series, which was supposed to have already debuted, and now it's pushed to the fall, and whenever that will come along. I don't know when that will happen, but I'm not exactly holding my breath for it, and I'm not exactly thrilled with everything I've heard about it. It just doesn't appeal to me. And apparently it is not going to be based upon the J.J. Abrams version of Star Trek, you know, which is the first two movies, plus the third one that recently came out, which hasn't exactly um, shaken the world. The new Star Wars movies um, have done very well for themselves. Re-energize the um, franchise after the debacle that was the prequels, and I, in my opinion, I think that once they get past Episode Nine, <clears throat> it would not shock me if they decide to redo all nine episodes in an either anime or traditionally animated. Uh, system, uh, a style, I should say. And the reason I say that is, is that it would connect the whole story together. And it would be, it would be expensive, but it would not be as tremendously expensive as a new movie would be. And I could see it happen. Uh, either that or they'll do a new live action Trilogy of Trilogies, <laughs> and uh, go that route. But that would be expensive, and that would require commitment <coughs> for nine films. And I don't know if anybody's really wanting to go that far, so we'll see how that happens. But anyhow, um, we're going to talk about uh, a variety of stuff if you've Listen to my other three podcasts, Forest City Tribune, Rutherford Sports Network, and Rutherford Times. Basically, uh, this is going to be a combination of those three. Those are going to go away, essentially. 
you'll still be able to find them. I'm not going to delete them from the archives, but I'm basically merging all three of them into one podcast, which is this podcast, which you will be able to hear, <coughs> I hope, on a weekly basis or at least maybe even a two, a two times a week basis. <coughs> I got something in my throat. Hang on just a second, folks. All right. All right, so this is this is the deal. Um, what I'll probably wind up doing is um, once or twice a week I'll do a podcast based on a particular topic, run it for like 30 minutes to an hour, and then go from there. We'll probably have some special podcasts from time to time to, um, to uh, you know, maybe an interview or something like that, depending on what the circumstances are and whatnot. So... And we may do something even crazier like, I don't know, maybe a live viewing of a particular movie or whatnot. Maybe do an MST3K kind of deal for a movie or something like that. Uh, I know we were supposed to have a thing this upcoming uh, weekend, but plans fell through, unfortunately. So it looks like that's kind of uh, out the window when it comes to uh, watching a particular movie, but that may change somewhat. Um, and we may talk about local events. I, and on my other podcast, Forest Street Tribune, I've talked about uh, why Rutherford County, North Carolina sucks. I'm going to be doing a podcast in the near future about what, how to make Rutherford County, North Carolina rock. <clears throat> and I have quite a few ideas on that. But I want to formulate them and put them in a format that you'll like. Well, that's it for right now. I just wanted to test this out, see how it went. And you're going to be seeing more shows like this in the near future. So, um, like we always say, good night, good luck, and may the good news be yours.